All right, George, thanks for joining us on 49ers Talk. It is a pleasure to meet up with you during a very busy time of the year. Oh, it's just happy to be here, man. Anything for you, my guy. Oh, wow. Well, thank you. Um, hey, another game at Levi Stadium. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in the early days of Levi Stadium, there was this whole, man, do the 49ers have a home field advantage? And now I sense that you guys love playing out there. Oh, Levi's is fantastic. Um, I mean, every year since I've been here as a rookie, it's just gotten better and better, you know, stronger, uh, you know, consistency, I guess, you know, with every single game. And granted, we've been playing better. You have to play well. To, you know, you have to earn the, that love from your fans. But Niners fans, they, I mean, they love us. And the fact that we're playing well, they're filling out the stadium, rain game versus Seattle, and it was packed. It was loud. The fans are in it. I mean, it, it's definitely a home field advantage. And you know, going back to the 2019 playoffs, I mean, it, that was the first time, I think, where people could really sense it. Oh, yeah. And you were a young guy. Those were your first playoff games. What do you remember about that time and just the, the environment out there? I mean, like I said, the, the fans were on it. Um, they were loud. I know they were, they were causing false starts on the other team. Um, our defense definitely got them into that. You know, that's one thing. Our defense does a great job of getting our crowd energized. You know, those three and outs, sacks on third downs, Bosa. I mean, the, the fans love that. And then whenever our offense puts up points, I mean, they are they are behind us so fast. And, you know, I think uh, – Going into that the second half last last week in Seattle, like they were they were loud. They had a, Seattle had a ton of miscommunications and stuff. Had to call timeouts when they didn't need to call timeouts because the play clock. Uh, Levi's was definitely in full force. And then you go back to 2019. I mean, we we ran the ball effectively, you know, during those playoff games early on. And but uh, our fan base, they were fantastic. It was so loud, as loud as I've heard it. And so you know, hopefully trying to replicate that one this weekend. Yeah, this this the postseason is you know. One game, one bad game, and you're out. And, you know, at halftime of that game against Seattle, there's a part of me thinking, this thing could be slipping away. Like, mm -hmm. you know, you guys are the favorites, but the longer you allow an underdog to stay in it. So what happened in the second half? Were you guys able to, was it, you know, flipping the switch? Or what, what do you think happened? Um, you know, we went into halftime. And, you know, it's funny. I just saw a Peyton Manning quote about halftime speeches. Did you see that yeah. one? It's just like, you know, not Overrated. that much. Yeah. yeah, you know, not that much happens at halftime. You know, someone might say something, but it's, hey, you know, get hydrated, go to the bathroom. Let's go do this. Like, we know what we're doing. And it, it, that's kind of how most of our halftimes go. It's like, if we're not winning by, you know, a significant amount of points, like, hey, this is exactly what we thought it was going to be. They're going to give us their best shot. All we have to do is play our football. And we know that's good enough because that's all we've been doing all year. And, you know, we beat Seattle twice playing our football, our type of football, and that won us a game. Like, we don't have to change anything up. This, hey, defense, swarm a little bit faster. Offense, take care of the ball. Get the ball in, the play in our players' hands and make plays. And the rest will take care of itself. And, you know, that's about all we did. Was there ever a point in that early part of that game where you thought, well, Brock, you know, Brock, it, Brock is looking like a rookie. Brock needs to kind of regain his composure. What, what do you think about how that game started for him? Oh, I mean, yeah, I mean, the first pass where he overthrew Debo, I was like, oh, that's the first one of those I've seen all season, you know, in the last six, seven weeks. So it was just, uh, hey, Brock, just hey, take a deep breath. You're still playing football. Sure, it's the playoffs, but you're playing football. You've already played Seattle. Like, just take a deep breath and play quarterback. And that's what he did the rest of the game. I think he had, like, two or three bad passes maybe. But after that, I mean, 300-plus yards, three touchdowns, running for first downs. I mean, that's the Brock that we've seen over the last seven weeks, and I think that's the Brock that we're going to continue to see. Well, one of the first things you said about him was that, you know, he played a lot of big games in, in college, played big games, played bowl games, lost some, won some. Why is the losing part important, you think, for a, a quarterback's maturation? Well, I mean, football is the most humbling you know, thing that we have in our lives right now. It will, you could be you know, riding the roller coaster high on life and then you can just get punched in the gut and you can lose a game, you can fumble the ball. Uh, everyone can love you one week. Everyone can hate you then, you know, 24 hours later. You know, that's just football. So being able to bounce back after a loss or, like, if you if you were the reason that you lost, being able to bounce back from that and maintain your confidence, that's an acquired skill set. Not everybody has that. You know, if you've won your entire life, you might not know how to bounce back from that, especially when the pressure is at its highest. Like, I'm, I'm not going to compare an Iowa State college football game to the NFL playoffs or anything like that. But, you know, for to be able to bounce back from doing something bad, a bad mistake, an interception, a bad throw, just to be able to bounce back from that and stay confident, that's how you win football games. And it's, it is an it's acquired skill set that not everybody has. I mean, you didn't know a whole lot about Brock before he no. got on the field. I mean, a little bit of practice with him. You saw him in practice. Mm -hmm. You were around him. But what has impressed you most about just how he's handled this situation since stepping in? 
I mean, one, he's handled all of our, we have a very dense playbook, you know, week to week, we change up plays a lot. You know, we try to keep some things consistent. We try to keep it easy, but there's a lot of checks. There's a lot of, hey man, coverage, we gotta check it to this play. Safety's on this side, we gotta, you know, the rotation, we gotta check it to this play. So one, understanding the playbook and just getting us in all the right stuff, that's an accomplishment in its own. But really his, his confidence, every time he steps in the huddle, like you can sense it, you can tell he's confident in himself. And whenever your quarterback is confident in himself, it makes everyone else like, all right, if he's confident, I'm confident because I know I can win too. And when you have the level of talent that we have in our offense and in our defense, because we know we have them in our back pocket or you have a great punter, you got a good, you have a great kicker. Um, you just, you have this confidence that no matter what happens, like our teammates got our back, but when our quarterback has this confidence of no matter what happens, I'm going to use my legs, I'm going to extend the play or I'm going to deliver, you know, and cover zero with the coming right, you know, coming right down. Uh, that confidence makes everyone around you play better. When you have that skill set in our huddle on offense, that confidence with all those guys, it makes us a pretty scary team. Does it change anything for you, not knowing exactly where he's going to be throwing the pass from? I mean, I think Brock does a fantastic job of, like, if it's in rhythm, he's a great job. And then, hey, if it's not in rhythm, he can still deliver in the pocket with a guy hitting him. But when he does use his legs, um, I think that's one thing we've gotten better at is, hey, finding someone getting open, finding open space, because, you know, we – We've never really had a running quarterback like that that's able just to go sideline to sideline, hash to sideline, spin move and all that stuff. We haven't had someone do that um, in my career. So just to see that we're getting used to it, I think we're getting better at it. So I think that's going to be something that you're going to see more of, especially, you know, against a team like Dallas who has very fast athletic pass rushers. Hey, pocket might break down sometimes. They're NFL football players. They're very skilled. It's going to happen. But I think Brock's uh, his ability to keep his eyes up while he's moving has been uh, has been very successful for us, and I think it's just going to get better. It, it seems like you know, I mentioned this to you a week or so ago that you know whenever if you ever get open or when whoever gets open, he's going to deliver the ball. And you say, well, what do you say to that? You always get open. Oh, right? I'm always open. Yeah, always. Open. I'm always he, open. He, he, even when you're covered, you're open. I'm open. Just throw, baby. That's a lot of confidence you have in your your ability. But tell me about how you feel that. Like you want those 50-50 balls. Oh yeah. Like I mean, that's what. Those are where the awesome plays come from. That's where the fun is. That's where the pressure is. That's where the stress is. And that's what makes football the greatest sport. Uh, you have 22 guys on the field at a time and they're all, you know, fighting for their lives or fighting for their livelihood. And just to get a 50-50 ball, you got to rip it away from somebody. Uh, there's not much better than that. And you got to love it when a quarterback gives you that opportunity too. And Brock's done a good job of he gives every single guy that opportunity. It doesn't matter if it's Christian. It doesn't matter if it's Juszczyk, Ayuk, Jawan, Debo, me. Like he's giving guys opportunities to make plays. And that's what football is, is when your number is called, you need to take advantage of that opportunity. And some guys don't, and that's when you get written out of an offense or some guys do. And that's when you get to make big plays and you, you got to make a lot of money and make good memories. You know what Kyle Shanahan says about you? He says that uh, I think he's almost annoyed by how positive you are. Mm -hmm. Does he get on you about just always being upbeat and positive? Because he's obviously not an always upbeat and positive guy. Oh, he has before. I'm like, hey, look, I'm going to make football as fun as I possibly can for the guys because it's a very stressful sport. And, you know, we all like there's pressure. Like you can't ignore the fact that there is pressure. There's a little anxiety here and there. But when you're out there having fun, you kind of forget about all that stuff. And football is really hard if you're just super stressed out the entire time. So if I can make all my teammates remind like remind them that we are playing a kids game, and we are having fun. Granted, the stakes are incredibly high. Just go out there and enjoy it. Go throw the ball, catch the ball, run your route, block the guy like you've done it 100,000 times. Just enjoy doing it. The, the, you guys have had so many different situations. Heck, just this year alone with, you know, Trey Lance to Jimmy Garoppolo to now Brock Purdy. And you've been with Kyle Shanahan this entire time. You've seen him as a coach. How, how did he handle that situation? And how do you think he's kind of, I don't know what the right word would be, matured or evolved as a head coach? Well, I will say this is our fourth year of three quarterbacks. So we've gone through it before, which is a crazy thing to say. Like most teams don't have to deal with that. But we have. We've had three quarterbacks in four different seasons. So like the plays, they kind of adjust for the quarterback. But, you know, I think the quarterbacks that we bring in are all, they all have similar capabilities. So the offense stays pretty similar. There's a di couple of different things here and there, depending on how everyone's playing. But, I, you know, I think Kyle does a really good job of he – sets up his best players for success. And so all he's trying to do is, how do I get Deba the ball in space? How do I get Christian the ball in space? How do I get George the ball in space? What route do I have to give Ayuk to set up another route? And he just does such a good job about building these up, and whether it's off of, we're gonna run this run play three times to set up this play action, which we do all the time, or hey, this play action is gonna set up this run for Elijah Mitchell. And no matter, he just always puts guys in the positions for success. He's not asking guys to, he's not asking, you know, Chris or Kyle Juszczyk just to win on go balls all the time or to win on, you know, three-step slants. He's putting people in a position where he knows that, hey, if I get the ball in this, if I get the ball in Kyle Juszczyk's uh, hands over the ball, he's going to drop step. He's going to give me 20 yards. And that's what he does such a good job of just, he gives us a chance to be great. 
and this Cowboys team you're facing has a lot of talent on the defensive that side. Do. Does does that create you know problems for you guys as far as where to find those matchups and just how to set up those kinds of plays when you have so much talent on the other side too? I think to an extent, um, you know, I think Dallas is definitely one of the most athletic defenses we've gone against. You know, from their entire D line, their linebackers, all their all their safeties and corners, they're all freak athletes, and so you know that's definitely something that you have to prepare for. But at the end of the day, I mean, we've been playing our game all season, and I think we've only gotten better. You know, I mean, we started the season out, what, one and two, losing against two teams that weren't even close to the playoffs. And I don't think if you check the tape from week three and you compare it to now, I think it's two different teams entirely. Just our skill sets have just gotten so much better. We've just gotten used to playing together. So, um, yeah, I mean, I just think the more football that we play, the better we're just going to get. You guys were already a good team, I think, trending in the right direction. And then you get Christian McCaffrey. Well, actually, at that point, you guys were still under 500. But how much has that helped you, helped Debo, helped Brandon Ayuk, helped everyone, his addition? And what? how has his addition really impacted, you think, the team? I mean, Christian McCaffrey is a guy who was all pro two positions in the same year. He's a fantastic athlete, uh, pro bowler, all pro. Like, he's fantastic. What he, Every time you give him the ball – um, he can make 10 guys miss. He can truck stick guys. He beats them with speed. He sees angles. Like he, he'll be running to the left and he'll see linebackers over playing. And so he'll know when to cut it back. And the longer he's been on our offense, the better he's gotten at running the ball on our offense. Cause not a lot of people run the ball. Like we do outside zone. We're running off the fall. We're running off the ball. We're trying to be physical. Not everybody does that. And so he's gotten much better at doing that. But what else he brings to the table is in the pass game, we can have a three man concept on the right side and he can be on the left side running just a little delay thing and he'll get a one-on-one versus a backer. But if you're gonna leave him one-on-one versus a backer, you're probably gonna take your other linebacker and help him out a little bit. And then now it's a three-on-three on, three on the front side. And so he just opens up all these options. So now you're getting, Ayuk's getting one-on-ones, I'm getting one-on-ones, Debo's getting one-on-ones. Every time Juwan's in, he gets a one-on-one, he always wins. And then if you want to take us away, good luck with your linebacker covering Christian McCaffrey in space. Okay. So yeah, he's, he's pretty good. Yeah, he's pretty good, okay, yeah, bottom I mean, line. Yeah, he's a fantastic running back, but he's also a phenomenal receiver. Speaking of phenomenal players, on the other side, Micah Parsons. Are you going to be – will there be some Kittle Parsons matchups? Oh, I hope so. I mean, the the best part about the playoffs is you're playing against the best players in the league. Um, at this point, I, mean, I know there's a lot of great players that aren't in the playoffs, but to get to the playoffs, you have to be great. Um, and so I, I hope that there's uh, opportunities for me to block him. I got a couple last year. I had, I had a lot of fun doing that. Um, he's going to blitz. Hopefully I have some pass pro against him, you know, just to show what I can do. And I can't wait to compete against someone that, you know, first team all pro in the talks for defense MVP. Well, I still think it'll be Bosa, but he's a fantastic football player and I just can't wait to compete against him. So you would just as soon be in pass protection on a passing play than running around? Oh, I would rather run the route and score touchdowns. <laughs> but getting a one-on-one pass pro and succeeding against it's pretty fun too. Okay, so uh, game days. I, I notice that you and check always come in together. Hmm? Is that a routine? How well, I'm pretty sure his wife uses his parking pass. So he just started, he rides with me because we just wake up around the same time, eat okay. breakfast together, and he just rides over with me. And, okay. And so is that a, how long has that been going on? Two weeks. Two, okay. <laughs> That's it? Yeah, I know, right? So not a big tradition. Uh, no. Uh, I mean, early on in my career, I'd always ride over with either Garrett Selleck or Jimmy G or whoever, on Bosa, whoever's riding over. But I drive myself now because it's nice and I like to drive. And uh, so whoever I have in the breakfast room just, always rides over with me any other rituals i know you do the the ritual you always see your family always. before the game uh was, was there an issue in mexico city no they got get... they made it down there okay they did make it down there and i got to see my my lucha man uh, pentagon jr down there that was fun no i mean just seeing the family um you know football you definitely feel like uh, a gladiator when you're out there and you know you are kind of going off the battle and so seeing your family right beforehand definitely uh makes things real and it just gives you a little bit more inspiration yeah what does it do does it how does it does it kind of ground you or like what what does it do for you uh just your thought process or your mindset i mean for me personally um i think unconditional love is something that not everybody has and i think it's a very powerful powerful thing and when i get to see my wife my mom my dad my sister like i know their love is they're gonna love me no matter what happens in the game so just go out there and try my hardest and give it my all and they're still gonna love me afterwards and it's very grounding it's very reassuring it gives me a lot of confidence in myself Okay, so second round of the playoffs, Dallas Cowboys come to Levi Stadium. Guys coming off the, the win over Seattle. How do you feel about where this team is right now and, you know, getting another close to accomplishing the, the ultimate goal? Uh, I mean, I feel great. I love our team. We've got the best defense in the NFL every single week besides one, I think. Um, and they're continuing to play at a high level. They're healthy. Bosa's healthy. Fred Warner's healthy. Like, 
we had a healthy football team. And it's cool too, because you watch the tape and like there are spots that we could get better at. And like there's, we have made some mistakes, but everything is very fix fixable in film. And so if we can just take another step from where we were last week, oh my gosh, we're going to get better. And then who wants to play a team, a better San Francisco 49ers? And, you know, and, and I think the Cowboys want to play us and I can't wait for that. I love the energy and I, I love that intensity. Um, and I just, I'm, I'm honestly just, I cannot wait for Sunday. I am just so excited for it. It's, the atmosphere is going to be great. Cowboys, Niners, playoffs. I mean, what else would you want?